Lithium-ion batteries are in everything nowadays. They are small, light, and can hold a lot of energy for their size. But they are not as easy to charge as other battery types. A lithium-ion battery requires a special charging circuit that manages a two-stage, constant current, constant voltage process. Fortunately, we have these charging modules. They are designed specifically for charging single lithium-ion batteries and are based around the TP4056 chip or one of its clones. The chip manages the charging process while the other two provide extra protection for the battery. These modules are cheap, easy to use and easy to find, which makes them a popular choice for DIY projects. I have used them myself in the past and they work fine. But still, I wanted to make something better and more suitable for the projects I am working on. That is why I came up with my own custom battery charging module based on a much newer chip by Texas Instruments. It is nothing fancy or complicated. Just like the TP4056 module, my charging board uses a linear design and can do up to 1 amp of current. However, it comes with many practical improvements that make it easier to use in my DIY projects. I will tell you more about it, but first let me introduce you to JLCPCB, the sponsor of today's video. With JLCPCB you can make custom circuit boards for your projects easily and reliably. Since 2006 the company has been providing affordable PCB manufacturing and assembly services and today serves millions of engineers from around the world. Prices are incredibly low, starting from just $2 for 5 PCBs. If you need professional assembly services, JLCPCB is ready to help with hundreds of thousands of parts in stock. They soldered the components for my module, which is why it looks so well made. I simply had to upload my manufacturing files. JLCPCB provided me with a quote instantly, after which I just had to set my requirements and place the order. You can pick from many shipping options, whether you need fast or affordable delivery. Use my links below to sign up and get free coupons. Also, do not miss JLCPCB's special discount on top quality 6 layer PCBs with no engineering fees for VIA in pad. Thank you JLCPCB for making this video possible and now back to the project. I'm sure you've noticed that my charging module is much bigger, but that is on purpose. It's because I have included a holder for an 18650 battery in my design. I think this is much more convenient than having the battery dangling by its wires or in a separate holder, especially if I am building something permanent. Plus, I do not have to worry about the voltage drop across any wires. Since my module is bigger, it also has space for mounting holes. I can use them to mount the module securely with standoffs inside a custom enclosure. If you are using the tiny TP4056 module, your only option is to glue it to your project as you see in many DIY videos. And speaking of enclosures, notice the USB port. First of all, it is Type-C, which is now very popular and, in my opinion, much more durable than the old school micro USB. Now, some of you will point out that these modules also come with Type-C. However, all of the Type-C versions that I've tried have the same problem. They only work with Type-A to Type-C cables. If I try to use a Type-C to Type-C cable, the module does not turn on. I made a whole video around this situation, so go check it out if you are interested. But in short, the USB Type-C connector requires a couple of extra resistors connected to it to work with Type-C cables. In my experience, these modules do not have these resistors, probably because they are made to be as cheap as possible. But I did include them in my design, which is why it works with any Type-C cable just fine. Also, did you notice that the connector on my module is longer? That makes it easier to put this charging module inside of a box. Because it sticks out, the connector can go through its wall, as long as it's not too thick. With these modules, your options are limited. You either have to glue the module outside the enclosure or make it cut through the wall to have access to the connector. The extra space on my charger also allowed me to add these pin headers. One of them is for configuring the charging current. If the jumper is at the upper position, the maximum current is 1 amp. But if I move it to the bottom position, the current depends on the value of this resistor, which I can solder manually. For instance, I now have it configured for just half an amp. Technically, you can change the charging current on these modules as well, but it's not as easy. 
They come with a resistor already soldered, but it's super tiny, so good luck replacing that by hand. The other set of pin headers on my module are for configuring the maximum voltage. I have set it to 4.2 volts by default, which is ok for most batteries. But some cells can go up to 4.3 and even 4.4 volts. If I want to, I can also set the maximum voltage lower. This allows me to use the charging module with other battery chemistries. For example, this lithium iron phosphate battery must be charged only up to 3.65 volts. The TP4056 can only do 4.2 volts. There is no option to set a different maximum voltage, and you cannot configure the minimum cutoff voltage either. These modules will let the battery discharge down to 2.5 volts, which is not ideal for every battery. By the way, if size was ever an issue, I could have made this charger much smaller. Notice that this module uses three separate chips. The charging management chip, the DW01 chip for protection, and two MOSFETs. All of their management and safety features are built into the single chip on my PCB, which barely takes up any space. I could have made a much smaller module if I didn't want to have the battery holder, the pin headers and the extra long USB connector. Perhaps the biggest downside of my module is that the chip gets hot and cannot support very high speeds, just like the TP4056. Both are linear chargers, meaning they are less efficient compared to a switching design. That is why with my module the charging current may drop below the set level of 1 amp. The chip's built-in temperature protection kicks in. I was hoping that the larger copper area would be able to dissipate heat better, but I was wrong. Still, the same thing happens with the TP4056 module. So even though it is advertised as capable of 1 amp of current, you will probably get slightly less than that in practice. I hope it's clear that making a custom charger instead of using a pre-made module can have a lot of practical advantages. And they do not have to be better technical specs like charging speed, better doesn't always mean more powerful. The design choices I made for my module make it much easier to configure and implement into an actual device. But should I make a second version with faster charging? Like this video if you want to see that and subscribe to never miss any of my future projects.